my side, the one has always been there pushing me forward in spite of all that I've heard and seen from you all. So I want you to know, I'm rest assured now because I got God and that's all I need. That's all I need. And his word, which will help me to catapult to even bigger. <laughs> These words keep ringing in our ears today. Please listen, don't turn a deaf ear as in the bitter uprising. May the Lord bless you, keep you growing in his word. Powerful, was it not? I just, I just said, Lord, have your way with your people today because I'm like, Father God, I'm just a mere vessel. You, you are no respecter of person. You'll use anybody that desires to be used. To We're so glad that you took the time to uh, fellowship with us and to be with us today. I know this word that I have before you is from God because he made me go through it in order to realize that the body needs to know also that we are not alone in, in what we're dealing with right now, that he is in control. And Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord God, that every word that I speak is your word, Lord God, that it will manifest in the hearts and minds of your people, Lord God, and that they will hold on to your word, Lord God, and that it will grow and it will mature, Lord God, to do the things that you have called each one of us to do. It is by your grace and mercy, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Our word today is faith and perseverance is a gift from God. We sometimes feel as though like, why am I going through this? Why is this happening? But we must realize that everything that we do, we're here to glorify somebody. And it is God himself. And even though we're in this year of uncertainty when it comes to the world, and even though COVID-19 still is present, so many have changed their perspective and started truly seeking God with their whole hearts. We all have listened to the news and our current president who has truly disregarded the scientist, scientist knowledge provided to him. <laughs> As I read certain par passages of scripture, they have strengthened my faith and keeps me pressing forward to all that God has in store for me. And the more he has in store for me is the more I will share out to you. Praise God. I am not where I am today because of who I am, but because I have a lot more focus on God and his word and the plan that he has set before me. For he knew when the light would come on in my life and I would sit at his feet and listen to his instructions for my life. Those of us that were in a place of little faith, well, we have seen our faith grow since March 2020 and COVID-19 struck America. Our thoughts of life have changed and we think more of the present life since we are seeing so many of us leave, leaving here rapidly. I pray that these Bible verses inspire your faith and motivate you to persevere no matter what you face. God promises to be our comfort and every present help in times of trouble. Psalms 46 and 1. God is not done with you, and yet he will help you to endure. Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, Great is your faith. Emphasis emphasizes great is your faith. Matthew 17 20, he said to them, Because of your little faith. <laughs> See how important faith is? Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Perseverance means more than endurance question for you to think about. 
Is there something in your life for which you need perseverance right now? Perseverance is a vital is vital to growing in your faith. And God wants his people to pres persevere no matter what happens. So we have to learn how to overcome obstacles, difficulties, trials, and tribulations to experience victory in Christ. We have two choices when faced with hardship. Trust in God and keep our vision on him or quit and abandon hope. Now, you know we need that hope. We can't survive without hope. God has so much in store for us, and it is his plan for us that struggles and hardships become blessings and rewards if we persevere. See, there's a reason for everything that we're doing. Sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes we like, wow, why? But we all are reach one, teach one, and we learn different things to help others. It's not just for you, it's for other people that you're going to come in contact with, that you're going to see in life, that you're going to share what you went through to help them, to catapult them to the next level in their lives. We must maintain our intimate relationship with Jesus Christ through the perseverance of faith. Proclaim as Job did, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. That's Job 13 and 15. Faith is the supreme endeavor of your life. Something to think about. I know to walk in faith and perseverance is not easy. But all things, all things are possible with God. Also, we have all had challenges which we never conceived of having this year. But look where you're at. You don't have COVID. You ain't sick. You got food on the table. You got a place to stay. You got your health and your strength. Your kids are healthy. You got a job. God is good. God is good. Stay positive. That is the only way we're able to break the enemy's back of making us thinking that we're not being successful in what we're doing. We are. We're being obedient to God, and we're submitting everything that we have before his throne. Here are some examples of perseverance in the Bible. There are numerous stories and scriptures on perseverance guiding us in this area. Let's take a look at some of the examples of perseverance in the Bible and see what they can teach each one of us. <laughs> Job, the first and perhaps most popular story of perseverance that comes to mind is the epic story of Job. His example was one of the extreme pain and sorrow, yet through it all, Job stayed true to God and his faith. Did you hear that? He stayed true to God and his faith. He didn't allow his pain or his sorrow to interfere with his relationship with God. That's strong. That's a strong will. That shows you that he, had, he knew no matter what, it's going to be God's way, whichever way it goes. But I know he's going to bless me and he's going to take care of me. That's the way we need to be. But I know it takes time. But as we continually read the word, Meditate on the word, speak the word, decree the word. It shall manifest in our lives. I suggest you read the, the story of for yourself in its entirety. But I'll hit the highlights right now. Job was a faithful man, blameless and upright. He served God and was a diligent follower. Diligent follower. Satan wanted to prove a point to God that he could break man's will. So he asked if he could torture Job, and God allowed it. See, anything that happens to you, he has to get permission. He just can't bother you without God giving him permission. But see, God knows the tenacity and the strength that he has in each one of us. He knows what we can deal with and what we cannot deal with. And even when we at our weakest, that's when he's his strongest in us. 
The only restriction God placed on Satan was he could not take Job's life. In the course of one day, Job was told by different servants that all his belongings and possessions, livestock, and ten children had been killed or destroyed by natural disasters or thieves. Horrific, huh? But he still trusted God. Despite all of this, Job still praised God even in his sorrow because when praises go up God gets the glory next Job was afflicted with terrible skin sores and yet he persevered and praised God in his grieving with illness Job's friends came and sat with him we got them type of friends right girl you should curse God and die like uh uh-uh I'm not going to do that I'm not going to do that but that's why your friends were saying man you done something to God God is doing all this to you what what are you thinking why you think God allowing this to happen to you you know but Job was like uh uh-uh I'm not going to play with that I'm not going to entertain that Job's friends came and sat with him despite the terrible advice they offered him Job still praised God But soon his praises turned to questions, bitterness, and anger. Job questioned how a just God could allow such terrible things to happen, even to a faithful servant. Have you ever questioned God in a hard time in your life? God eventually intervened and implored Job to be brave. Job realized the power of God and was overcome by it. Job recognized God's true character and accepted his own faults and constraints as a human. Job also intervened for his friends and God had mercy on them. He intervened, meaning he prayed for them, for the words that they said to him, because they were not positive words. But he still prayed for them. And despite their horrible advice, God took care of them. God then had mercy on Job and restored him and all his possessions granting him twice as much as he had previously more children and a long prosperous life so he got double for all that he went through I know some of us don't want double children but you know we do want to be out of this what we're going through right now right amen Job's story is the ultimate test of faith and an example of perseverance in the Bible Even in the darkest of times, through death and turmoil, questions of faith and God, Job was faithful and trusted God's plan. Can we start to trust God's plan? We did it our way. We really need to start trusting God's plan. We can learn we can learn into we can lean into Job's story as our own and trust that God's plan is bigger and better than we could ever know. The next one is Jeremiah is another case of faith and perseverance. Jeremiah was blessed by God and tasked with preaching God's word to his people. He is an example of perseverance by continually preaching and teaching God's word despite all that was done to him. His faithfulness to share God's revelation to an unfaithful nation is our ultimate example to persevere in preaching, teaching, and sharing the gospel. We must always endure. We are are a part of God if he exists we exist to share the good news of Jesus with our lost world that's what we all here for 
Jeremiah faced threats, prison, and much more to share his faith in God's word. Will we endure to share the gospel? That is what our purpose is, to share the gospel with our loved ones, with people that we run in contact with, just giving them encouragement, giving them strength, giving them motivation to know that, hey, you you in this right now, but don't even focus on that. I just want you to praise God and thank God because he's going to bring you out of it. And a lot of times we in our flesh body, we don't think about our spiritual body as being attacked. So that's why I say we need to praise God more. And, and, and when we praise God, we eventually come up out of that thing a lot faster than we would if we just automatically, just arbitrarily keep talking about it. Keep talking about it. Yeah, girl, I'm going through this. Yeah. No. Lord, I'm going to praise you in spite of. Lord, I, I, I know where I'm at, but I'm going to praise you anyway. I'm going to trust you. For I know your plans for me are to prosper and not to harm me, not to do wrong to me, to do good by me. And I'm going to do good by you because I'm going to trust you. I'm going to lean on you and I'm going to listen to you and you alone. But sometimes we don't do that. We listen to our friends. And that's where we fall short. And that's when we need to go back to God and say, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. It's nothing wrong with, with making a mistake, but acknowledge when you make the mistake. Because that shows your maturity. That shows that you're growing. Everything we're doing is, is, is learn, we're learning how to be like God. No, we, we, we didn't start out this way, but we're going to end up this way. Because I'm decreeing it and declaring it every day. We will be like Jesus. We will be. In spite of what the world says. Sometimes we forget how good we have it. Especially in a country where we are ultimately free to say what we want. We have the choice to proclaim and share Jesus' gospel to anyone we want. But do we? Something to think about. We forget that there are Christians around the world who do not have the same freedom, who gather in house churches and basements to worship and share. They whisper and proclaim God's word at the risk of being imprisonment and sometimes even killed. Yet we're too afraid to walk across the street and talk to our neighbor inviting them to church on Sunday. Has God ever shown you a person to speak to and you just walked away? I stopped for a moment because I want you I want the Holy Spirit to administer to you. And you tell God, I'm sorry. And I won't do that again. The next time I will speak to the person. Even if I just say Jesus loves you. Even if I just say Jesus loves you. I will not walk away no more, Lord, because I know what my assignment is. We must be diligent to share the gospel when God asks us, asks us, I'm sorry. Jeremiah is a perfect example of this kind of perseverance in the Bible. And we should follow his example, proclaiming Christ to those who hear. The next is Apostle Paul is another example of faith and perseverance. I think we all know about a Paul. <laughs> Paul is the ultimate example of perseverance in the New Testament. No one has a better conversion story going from killing Christians to becoming one than Paul. Yet after his conversion, he became so on fire for the Lord that he faced many trials and persecutions. No one details this better than Paul himself in 2 Corinthians 11, 23-33. He lists some of the trials he had to face. He was in prison repeatedly, repeat, repeatedly. He was flogged. He was exposed to death again and again. He received 39 lashes five times. Beaten with rods three times. Belted with stones, shipwrecked three times, and that's just a few of the things that has happened to Paul. But let's center in on 2 Corinthians 11.30. 
If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. Because in our weakness, God is made strong. When we say, I ain't dealing with it no more, that means we didn't gave it to God and we're going to wait on him to do what he needs to do. And that's a lot of times what we need to do. Some things are just out of our control. I know we want to, to, to nurture and protect, and, but sometimes it's, it, it's going to take God to do it. It's going to take God to do it. Because we tell our loved ones, uh, I, I don't want you doing this. I feel something's going to happen. Don't do this. I feel you shouldn't do this. Okay, they don't like listening to us. So that's why God has to send somebody else to speak to our loved ones, to direct them and, and give them instructions. Because they don't want to, they all, all they see is, well, I remember when you was doing this, and I remember when you was doing that, and you like, okay, but... I woke up. I recognized that that was wrong. But at that given moment, our siblings or our children don't recognize that we're starting to recognize the mistakes we've made. And we're trying to correct it, but we don't want you to fall down that same rabbit hole that we fell down. Paul embodies what it means to preserve persevere in the faith. His letter in the New Testament tells stories and are a crucial example of perseverance in the Bible we must follow. Also, the persistent widow showed her faith and perseverance. Jesus tells us a parable, which is a story of a widow in Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. It, was, it is a perfect example of perseverance in the Bible we can follow. It details how a widow goes before a judge who does not fear God or man. She pleads with the judge to right a wrong done to her by her adversary. She continually pleaded with him to do so. After a while, he caved, and even though he did not fear God or man, he avenged her wrongdoing. She is essentially one wore him down with her faith and faith and perseverance. If you really truly believe something is being done wrong to you and you're pursuing it and you're trusting God, don't stop. Don't stop. Keep thanking God it's going to work to my good. It's going to work to my good. It's going to work to my good. They're going to see that what they did was wrong. But don't be angry, don't be bitter, and don't be harsh in the process. The parable goes on to highlight how God would avenge his children, believers, even more swiftlier than an earthly judge. When we continually cry out to God, he hears us. We must continue in faith and perseverance. That is what keeps us strong. This story is to show us that persistently pleading with God, talking with him, praying and preserve, persevering in faith will reap his reward. He hears our prayers and he listens to his children. Everything that you all have said, he heard it. He's, he, he might be late to you, but he's not late. He's not late. He says, trust me, daughter. Trust me, son. I will take care of it. But he wants your faith to be even stronger than what it was. He gave you a little bit of faith when you started out. But now that you're growing up in the word, you should have a lot more faith. To whereas nobody can make you waver in what God has shown you or told you or even what you read in his word. Because the same that he did for these people. You can say, God, you did this for the widow woman. I know you can do this for me. You did this for Jeremiah. I know you can do this for me. You said you're no respect to a person. Trust the word. The word works. But we have to use the word in order for it to manifest. Take heart, brothers and sisters. God hears, hears us. 
This example of perseverance by a widow is told to show us that whatever our problems are, even if we think they're too little or too big, should be lifted up to God daily. He wants to hear from us. So we should bring, to, bring them to God who is mighty enough to solve them. He wants your problems. He's, he wants everything that's concerning for you concerns him. When you cry, he cry. When, you, when, you, when you're fidgety, he's fidgety. Whatever you're going through, he's going through. He just waiting on you to allow him to come in and to assist you with the situation. He is a solution solver. But a lot of us, again, we try to do it in our flesh, and that's where we make the mistake because we allow the enemy in, especially when we have not been able to control our flesh. Keep our flesh underneath our feet and speak the word of God. Stay in the spiritual realm when you have an issue. Don't deal with it in the flesh because the enemy knows your weakest points in your flesh. But if you stay in the spiritual realm, it's all God. Amen. Jesus himself is the ultimate display of perseverance until death. He was born, lived a sinless life, and taught us how to live by his example. He persevered through agony on the cross, gave his life for a sinner like us and offered the most perfect example of endurance as he finished the race of life perfectly. Jesus Christ is the ultimate example of perseverance in the Bible. We can read his story through the Gospels and follow his example. He showed us how to persist through adversity, pain, sorrow, mountaintops, and valleys. If we follow Jesus' example, I know to walk in faith and perseverance is not easy. But all, all things are possible with God. Now join me next Sunday for the conclusion of this message. <laughs> now it is time to give. It is a time that we worship with in our giving. Let us please prepare our offering and our communion items now. I'll give you a moment. Amen. 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 Okay, we should be ready about by now. Praise God. I'm going to read a little story with you first before I give it to you. Being faithful with little. The scripture I'm going by is Luke 16 and 10. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. All of us set limits on ourselves and what we can and cannot do. We tell ourselves that we don't have enough time or money. Regardless of what you own, how much you earn, the skills you possess, or your age, you can be faithful to God today with what you have. Even if you think it's little. Got a story for you. There's a little boy family adopted a kitten for, for him from a local animal shelter for his birthday. Inspired by the work done at the shelter, this young boy asked his parents to help him donate to the shelter. Over the course of a week, 
He was able to round up food, toys, blankets, and other supplies the shelter desperately needed. What the little boy was able to put together helped the shelter. Just as the little you may give will help us here at the Great I Am Faith Center. Hey, God is good. Serve God with what you have. Commit to him and thank you for whatever you give. Now let us worship God in our giving. And you on the web may also visit our website or our church app to give your donation or your seed offering. Thank you. Now it's time for us to do communion. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I will be coming from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. Put your elements up towards heaven. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Partake. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Partake. <coughs> Ooh, that went down room. Kind of strong. <laughs> Father God I thank you for the message I thank you for the receivers of this message I thank you Father God for those that are online that are listening as well and I thank you Father God that they themselves will rehearse the scriptures that I've given and they will adhere to what your word says Lord God and they will be obedient to what you said because we all are walking by faith and we're persevering with you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. You need to have a closer walk with Jesus. You can't do this by yourself. You know, uh, I thought about the Transformers and, and how the little car, they started out as cars, right? And they were the people that were good, like us, Christians, good, you know? And they were fighting the evil people in the world, you know what I mean? And when they would transform themselves into big, mighty robots, it made me think about the angels that God has guarding each one of us. Do you want to move forward with God? being the GPS of your life or are you in a position to receive the blessings God has for you <laughs> the reason why I'm talking about positioning is because for the last two weeks I've been put into a position whether I'm going to stand and trust God or is I'm going to believe what the world is showing me and saying we all are facing something in this world that we don't understand. But I mind you and ask you to start trusting God in that situation. Stop listening to people 